Let's turn to an extraordinary report now from North Korea, an exclusive, because uh, that country is in a period of unprecedented isolation. It's been over three years since it sealed its borders in response to the pandemic. No one has been able to leave or enter the country, and for a long time, even supplies of food and medicines were stopped. Well, this has likely created some of the harshest conditions North Koreans have ever had to live through. Well, three people living in North Korea have risked their lives to tell the BBC what is actually happening. Let's go to the newsroom. Jean McKenzie has this exclusive story for us. And it is quite extraordinary to hear from people like this, Jean. Just tell us, first of all, how you got this story and the sorts of challenges you had getting it. Yeah, because look, it is impossible to talk to people directly in North Korea because they are completely forbidden from talking to anyone outside the country. But because the borders have been sealed for so long now and we were starting to get reports that things inside the country, the situation inside the country was dire, we were starting to get reports of chronic food shortages, we decided we wanted to try and find out what was happening. So what we did was we worked with an organisation that actually has a network of sources inside North Korea and they were able, these sources were then able to find people who wanted to be interviewed by us. We sort of explained what the BBC was and how far far and wide their voices would be, heard, would be heard and they wanted to tell the world about what was happening in the country. So for months really we have been working with these sources to try and get our questions to people and then have the sources relay the answers but piece by piece because it has been so risky. So it's taken months for us to get all this information and to finally piece it together and really get a picture of what's happening inside North Korea for the first time now in over three years. The piece you're about to watch reveal some of what we've found and just to warn viewers that there are some pictures in there of a famine in the late 1990s which they may find disturbing. Food supplies are so low, people have started dying. This chilling testimony comes from inside North Korea. Once I didn't eat for two days. I only drank water. Recently, people have been knocking on the door, asking for food, because they're so hungry. Hearing from people inside this isolated country is extremely rare. But with fears the country is on the brink of a famine, we've been secretly communicating with people who live there. We're using actors and animations to illustrate their words and have changed their names to protect them. In our village, five people are starved to death. Chan Ho is a construction worker living near the Chinese border. In one family, their wife was too ill to work, so her two children were surviving by begging. In the end, all three of them died. At first, I was afraid of dying from COVID, but then I began to worry about starving to death. At the start of the pandemic, North Korea completely sealed its borders. These pictures, released by the regime, are all the world's been able to see. For years, no one has been allowed to enter the country. Authorities even stopped food and medicine from crossing the border. In South Korea, we began to get reports of chronic food shortages, and so we teamed up with an organisation here. Daily NK has sources inside the country who were able to get our questions to people. This is Ji Yoon, who lives in the North Korean capital Pyongyang, the wealthiest part of the country. She tells us even here, supplies are running dangerously low. Once, I didn't eat for two days. I thought I was going to die in my sleep at night. My husband and I survived by thinking 10 more days, and then another 10 days, thinking if something happens, we might starve, but at least we'll feed our kids. There are lots of beggars now. If they're lying down, we check them and usually find they're dead. There are others who kill themselves at home or disappear into the mountains.
What these people are telling us evokes memories of the devastating famine of the late 1990s, known as the Arduous March, which killed as many as three million people. For the past 10, 15 years, we really heard of death by starvation. That was something that happened during the late 1990s or early 2000s. But to hear it happening again, you know, in the past two, three years, I think, you know, it is taking us back to the arduous march, which was the most difficult period for the North Korean people. When COVID finally breached the country's borders, the authorities banned people from leaving their homes. During one lockdown, I know of five people that were trapped in their house for 10 days. They were half dead by the time they were let out. They managed by sneaking out at night to get food. But the spectre of another famine has not stopped Kim Jong-un from funneling his limited finances into building nuclear weapons. The money he spent on missile tests last year would have been enough, according to some estimates, to ensure his entire population was properly fed. The people never wanted this endless weapons development that brings hardship to generation after generation. I want to live in a society where we don't starve, where my neighbors are alive. North Koreans are more isolated than ever before. It's getting harder for them to survive and impossible to help them. Jim McKenzie, BBC News. So we, we did hear back from the North Korean government. We put our findings to them and to our surprise, they did respond. They told us that they have always prioritized the interests of their people, even during difficult times, which you know, we found this response interesting because actually this in some way, I think was the North Korean government accepting that times are challenging, which is unusual for it to do. You know, the North Korean government likes to often pretend that everything is great. The other thing, though, they said to us was that our report was not entirely factual because it was based on testimonies from anti-DPRK forces, the DPRK being what the North Korean government calls itself as a country. But interestingly, they didn't refute anything specific that we had given them, just that general point that they weren't entirely factual reports. But it is unusual to get a response from the North Korean government in this way. And Jean, in terms of uh, the borders being closed, is there any sort of indication of perhaps when they might reopen? There have been murmurings over the past couple of months that perhaps the North Koreans are preparing to reopen the border. Of course, it has now been more than three and a half years and every other country in the world has reopened its borders after the pandemic. But ultimately, we don't know, as, as is the case with so much about North Korea. They could decide that they want to keep them closed for another couple of years. I think Kim Jong-un at the moment will be making a calculation. It's clear that these border closures are hurting people a great deal and that people in the country are dying as a result of being so closed off from the rest of the world. But at the same time, Kim Jong-un has chosen to keep these borders closed for a reason. And if he were to open up again, it would mean letting foreign diplomats back into the country, aid agencies, aid workers. It would really be allowing the rest of the world to see what has been happening. And perhaps he is not ready to do so if indeed things are as bad as our interviewees are telling us they are.